now. Jalen Brunson has really led this Nick team in the first three games of this West Coast trip. I mean, that Sacramento game, that Portland game, he was brilliant. And obviously Golden State as well. Uh, Kaz, I'm looking at you. When you see, when you hear Draymond Green say that Jalen Brunson's playing at an all NBA level, what does that mean when he's getting compliments from a player of that state stature, Draymond Green's stature? I would say that the uh, the soft launch of the Jalen Brunson superstar project is off and running, right? Like Draymond Green, one of the most famous voices in all of sports media, obviously. Uh, you go up and you play against the Golden State Warriors, and you know a lot of times he'll he's not going to hold his tongue. He's not somebody who's going to say something that he doesn't really mean. And Draymond Green has probably forgot more about basketball than a lot of people will ever learn. So just as far as his cerebral approach to the game, he can truly appreciate how great a player Jalen Brunson is. Uh, he mentioned something about wanting to guard him uh, on the isolation more than he would on a pick and roll because – of just how fundamentally sound he is, how every single move that he has is a counter move to whatever you're going to do to guard him defensively. And this is a guy who is, yeah. by large accounts, one of the best defensive players we've ever seen in the NBA, saying this guy can score on all three levels of the court. He's a nightmare to defend off the pick and roll. And he just handed you a L on your court, right? So uh, add to the fact you know, Draymond Green saying this on his podcast. We're seeing the AT&T commercial that came out today with, with Sabrina Ionescu and the, the Jalen screens and all that type of stuff. He's had the numbers. He's had the market. He's had the podcast now. I think the, the soft launch into sort of the entire league, knowing that this guy isn't just a good dude for his contract. He's not just a guy who got his first All-Star game. This is a true superstar player. In the NBA, and when you have superstar players, all you need is a little bit of help. All you need is a little bit of, uh, you know, backup when it comes to these playoff games. And he's already proven it on the biggest stages, whether it's in NCAA basketball, whether it's been in a playoff situation. And now he has the weight of expectations coming into the season because it seems like everybody is waiting or hoping for this Boston Celtics, New York Knicks, Eastern Conference Finals to hopefully play out. Health is going to, you know, really depend on if this happens. But Draymond Green, all the praise in the world to Jalen Brunson. He's saying what we've all saw about him ever since he first put on a New York Knicks uniform. He is an absolute stud and arguably, arguably, probably the best point guard to ever put on a New York Knicks uniform, not named Walt Clyde Frazier. That is heavy praise for a guy like that. Brendan, what about you? What have you seen from Jalen these first three games of the trip? Well, I'm going to do it a little differently. Um, let's talk about two things. Number one, what is the nature of the New York Knicks offense? What's the design? You know, how does it work? Well, we've gone through about three stages this year. So you had the old team that went 17 and 15, and there's a lot of five-man continuities, a lot of dribble handoffs, the start sets, and now you're developing into a scoring action. A lot of that had to do with R.J. Barrett. Well, R.J. Barrett was gone, and then we went into stage two of the offense, which looked a lot like a Tom Thibodeau Chicago offense with Derrick Rose. And you're running straight pick and rolls, side, high, step ups, all kinds of different kinds. But in reality, if you're doing that 80% of the time with Brunson, you might have just been wearing down Brunson with all the contact in all the different pick and rolls. So what have the Knicks done now? They've gone into stage three. Stage three is kind of like a starting pitcher in baseball with four or five pitches. So now you're running some pick and roll with him. But if you notice in the last two or three weeks, now they're bringing him off the ball a lot more. So he is going down to the baseline and coming off of pin downs or coming off dribble handoffs. Or there's what's called a Phoenix set where he goes to the foul line and then he takes the screen, goes to the wing, and there are different options where you can use them there. So in trying to preserve Brunson, by bringing him off the ball a lot more, and DiVincenzo is essentially the point guard, A, that makes it harder to guard him because it's different areas of the floor where he's coming, and B, you're preserving how much contact you're getting on him, and that's vital. Like if he goes down and then you're in the playoffs or – if he's not 100, you know, the Knicks still have offensive problems right now with getting enough points to win these games. So 
The funniest thing I hear about Brunson is number two. Well, just put a bigger guy on him. Okay, well, if you just put a bigger guy on him like Harrison Barnes or Chris Murray on Sacramento, that doesn't mean anything. He has the footwork, he has the caginess to beat bigger guys and get 30 or 35 on them. So I think the whole notion of like, you're going to put a six, seven guy on him and he's not going to score. I don't think that's true at all. He's so crafty with his footwork that he's going to get good shots. Now, if you're talking about like Kelly Oubre and he's six, seven and he has length and he has good footwork, well, that's one of Jalen's not as good games lately was shooting the ball, but was he a hundred percent? But that type of a guy with size and with some foot quickness, if the Knicks get in the first round and they see a guy like that, well, that is a little bit more of a challenge. And now we're going back to, is he getting calls with contact when he goes to the basket or is he creating the contact? And that's why he's not getting to the line. But just putting a bigger guy on him, come on, this guy is unreal right now. And he can make threes and play with guys around the three-point line who are bigger guys, and he can beat them too.